After a solid nine months of property performance here in Australia, I'll tell you what, there is a lot of FOMO out there in the market. So today we're gonna to talk about whether or not you've missed the boom. I've got to say, I've been feeling it myself, man. Like, not so much in the last three months as it softened a tiny bit, but before that, I was like, I have to buy more property, like, right now. Dude, it was insane. Like, I was sort of feeling it when I was trying to go for that fourth <laughs> property. We felt it when we were trying to help mum out with her property and some of our clients, but then we come back and look at the data and you're like, okay, cool. Yeah, things are hot, but there's still so much opportunity in the right areas. That's what I love, man. Like there's places like Sydney and Melbourne and Hobart that have absolutely no doubt gone off their head in the last five to 10 years. And then there's places like Brisbane, Perth and Adelaide that are still so affordable. And while some of the suburbs in those markets close to the water and to the city have gone nuts, there's suburbs in all of those areas sitting right next to them that are just so affordable still. Like suburbs that have done less than 1% growth per year for the last 10 years type thing. Yeah, like we like to really break it down and get back to the data to try and figure things out, take the emotion out of it. So there's some of the sort of key performance indicators that we've been looking at to try and identify where the market's at, how hot certain areas are. So let's, let's go through a few of the ones that we've been really noticing. You know, without a doubt, it is hot. Auction clearance rates in the cities where auctions work are super high. The days on market Australia-wide has come right down, which means places are selling faster. Vacancy rates are low. The number of approvals at the bank are at an unprecedented high. The number of first-timers in the market are at a 10-year high as well. Um, you know, just out the back here, we're in a suburb in the south side of Brisbane that we're starting to look at. This is a $1.1 billion 40-year project, and this is just one of countless projects like this around Australia at the moment, which is super exciting. There's going to be 2.4 kilometres worth of foreshore dining, living, restaurants, accommodation, just in this one little suburb alone now. That's on top of almost a billion dollars, I think you said, that was spent in March this year alone on just renovations Australia-wide. There's a construction boom going on that is resulting in a trade shortage plus a timber shortage and a roofing shortage right now. Now, all of these things are positive. It's also all been chucked as fuel in the fire by the Australian government to get the economy going again. They want to see unemployment rates back at 4% and inflation starting to kick in by the end of this year, late next year. So this is all stuff that's creating this feeling like there's no time in the market and we've mm. got to get in today. But I want people to really know that you can start to relax, that there's plenty of time to get in, that there's some markets coming off a long-term bottom and we're super excited about picking the eyes out of the markets to grab them. One of the things that we just just recently saw was a bit of a, an article or an update from uh, Jeremy Shepard, who's the director at DSR. And what he was looking at is the previous performance or the previous 10 years in a market and, and how that can impact the next 10 years of performance. And basically what he was saying is that if a market has underperformed in the previous 10 years, the likelihood of that performing quite well in the next 10 years are quite good. So when you think about that and you think about areas like Melbourne, like Sydney, like Hobart that have actually done real well over the last 10 years up to 2021, you know, they're not really the markets that we like the look of at the moment. But then you look at your Brisbane, your Perth, your Adelaide, your Darwin's even that have done absolutely nothing. You know, some suburbs that we're still buying in are more affordable today than they were 10 years ago. You know, it starts to look a hell of a lot more interesting. There's a lot of upside potential, especially once you factor in massive development and infrastructure projects like this, the massive population growth that's occurring. Like right here, we just looked it up on Google Maps. We're literally a 40 minute drive to the Brisbane CBD and a one minute drive to the, to the bays in Brizzy. It's incredible. Like I'm super excited. And that's what I suppose I've got myself to over the last couple of months to sort of start to look at the market objectively again for myself because I am looking to buy at least one, if not another property this year, even though I said I wasn't <laughs> going to. It's just too good a buying opportunity in some of these suburbs we've just identified. But I start to look at them and I go, well, this particular part of the city, for example, in North Brisbane Beach has gone up by $300,000 in the last four years. And then this particular beach on the southeastern side of the city which five years ago when I was looking at both was a hundred grand more is now sitting at $200,000 cheaper. And so 
that's why we're down here today. That's why we're constantly scouring the suburbs and constantly looking for opportunity. Now, another big thing with this boom going on at the moment or this feeling of missing out that people have is this feeling that just because Sydney and Melbourne are expensive, that that is the norm in Australia. Mm. We're buying suburbs at the moment. I'm not joking, within 23 Ks of the city. And we've paid as little as 200, uh, what was it? $298,000 recently for a knockdown opportunity for a client in a suburb close to the city with great indicators and a train station. Now, another thing that I've seen in this particular market is, you know, a lot of people thinking that just because Sydney, Melbourne, you know, Geelong, Mornington Peninsula, Hobart is expensive, that that is the experience of every property in Australia. But it is absolutely not the case at all. I know for an absolute fact that there's areas within Adelaide, Brisbane, Perth, and a lot of the other major markets in Australia where you can get incredibly high quality property close to the beaches or close to the city for the 400, 500, 600K range every day of the week with great indicators, great demographics, low percentages of renters, high average household incomes. And as you said with the DSR data, places that have just done such a little amount for so long with such a great long-term history that there can only be upside over the next 20 years in some of these places. Yeah, it's just about doing your research and understanding, you know, some of the, the different movements that a market's had. And, you know, one thing that we sort of look at is that ripple effect or that knock-on effect of an area because right now we're buying in some suburbs that are, you know, $600,000 and then literally two to five kilometers just down the road or just over the highway, we're buying for four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars. So there's just so much opportunity. You just got to know the market indicators to look for. The biggest thing that I wanted to communicate is that, you know, while the media is making you feel like you're missing out at the moment and while the baker, the butcher and everybody else in Australia is talking <laughs> about property, I was getting my hair cut and the hairdresser was talking about property. No. Nice. I've got mates that I grew up in with at school in that are like um, PE teachers that haven't thought about property in their lifetime, they're like, hey, mate, I need you to get something for me in Brizzy now. And it's like, that is okay, but separate yourself, as Simon said. Focus on what it is that you want, where you are right now, where you want to be longer term, what the right amount of money to spend for you is after talking to your broker or your bank manager, and then strategically enter the market at a time that works for you without rushing in there making a mistake like I've made before where you buy something that's too small or in the wrong suburb or on a main road and really stick to those fundamentals that we talk about online because the next five to six years in some parts of Australia are going to represent the most incredible buying opportunity in the last 20 years and in other parts of Australia you know that are already topped out they're going to be a pretty tough period of time mm. for people so do your research and make the right decision and an informed one. So in a nutshell, you haven't missed the boom. There is still plenty of opportunity out there in the right areas. So as Ben said, do your research, you know, learn a little bit more, figure out what your strategy is, and then you know, go out there and invest with confidence. So we're gonna keep bringing you heaps of videos like this on the Australian property market. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the big red button. Uh, we also got another channel over on Instagram and Facebook. Um, so go like that, follow us on Instagram and uh, keep in touch. Now, if you're thinking about getting into the market right now or if you've got a friend that's talking to you about that FOMO right now, then please share this video with them so that they know that they've got that time because I would much prefer them to wait and buy the right property as opposed to emotionally rush into the market and buy the wrong thing. Oh, sweaty, so sweaty.